So we just got a tiny glimpse into the wisdom of SpongeBob SquarePants and Patrick on what it takes to be a man. <laughs> and while mustaches can be cool, acting reckless and foolish like those two just did, <laughs> that's anything but. So why is it then that so many guys think that they can act like that in the same exact fashion and lead well in a relationship? It's kind of an interesting question when you think about it. Yeah, I see some people shaking their heads. I mean, think about it. Look at the examples that we see in pop culture and on TV shows every single day when it comes to guys that are in romantic relationships. They all have this common theme going on. And it's like to be loud, to be proud, to be brash. Or, or like, let's just use as much sarcasm and laziness to the highest extent as possible. Or, or how about like, let's find a really strong, smart woman and make her our second mom. And, you know, be immature because just like SpongeBob's new mustache, it's cool. But is it? Is it really? You know, judging by the mess that is dating today, I'm thinking that it's going to take a whole lot more than mermaid magic and cool mustaches made of seaweed to lead well. Mm -mm. There has got to be a strategy to it. There's got to be some kind of a benchmarking system to know where we're at in the process with leading and fortunately for us, there are. God has given them to us. In his infinite wisdom, he has laid this out for how guys can lead well in a relationship with or without a mustache. And tonight, I'm going to talk about it. We're going to start talking first about gender roles, though. And I know that word, that phrase can be a little bit like, uh, for some people, they don't like hearing it. But we're, we're following God's word in this. So we're going to dissect it. We're going to look at what he says about it and how it works for us. But particularly how it works in romantic relationships, in dating relationships. So for this message tonight, just so you guys know, if you didn't, I'm going to focus a little more on the guys, all right? However, girls, it is still really important that you hear what's being said for a couple of reasons, but mostly so that when you're evaluating people to date, you're going to know what you should be looking for. So everything I say tonight is what you're going to look for in a guy, but guys, everything I say tonight is what you're going to strive to become, all right? And in, in two weeks, we're going to have part three of this message, and it's going to focus more on the girls. But again, I say to you guys, you want to be there because you want to hear what we have to say about the girls to know what you need to look for. It's going to go way beyond look for a girl that loves Jesus. Because what I'm talking about is how does she treat you? How does she interact with you? That's what I'm talking about. Same thing tonight, ladies. How does he interact with you? Not just does he love God? Does he go to church? Does he read his Bible? Beyond that, we're going deep tonight. Your notes are like super detailed. If you haven't noticed, like turn it front and back. It's because we're covering a lot of ground tonight. All right. So let's just get started with it. All right. Tonight, I'm going to focus on you guys heavily. So men, I'm talking to you, okay. Um, you guys have one major goal when it comes to dating, when it comes to getting involved with a girl. One major goal, but it's kind of really hard. However, it's not impossible. That's the good news. It's obtainable. It's achievable. But it's not easy. Your goal is to become a spiritual leader. That's super broad. We're going to dissect that. We're going to peel back some layers and understand what that really means. All right? A spiritual leader is someone who not only leads, but they initiate. They take calculated risks. They are intentional and they continue to grow in their faith. Now on the flip side, just side note, ladies, you have slightly different goals that we're gonna talk more in detail next week, but your goals are to become spiritually discerning, 
to gain wisdom in knowing how to guard your heart properly, because there's a wrong way to do it, and also to grow in your faith, to keep growing. So we're going to talk more about that next time, girls, but for now, I'm going back to the guys. Guys, let's talk about these four traits of being a spiritual leader, okay? All of these things are what kind of comprise being a spiritual leader. Um, you're going to see them on the screen. And here's the thing that you, you guys need to know. It's really important that you have a good handle on all of these things before you start to date someone. Because these are the traits that are going to help set you up best in your relationships and eventually in marriage. Um, but I want to just kind of give like a real disclaimer. Let's say that you do master a lot of these things. It doesn't mean that your relationships are going to be conflict free. Like relationships are hard, period. But if you do get a grip on these things, guys, you're going to be set up really, really well better than a lot of other guys to handle them in your relationships. So let's start with a basic understanding of what it looks like to be a spiritual leader as a man, all right? In today's world, here's something that if anyone in the room has dated ever or had a girlfriend or boyfriend ever, then this scenario should be somewhat familiar. All right, guys, we see a lot of men that are dating a woman or even married men, and they're kind of always like, have this perplexing situation happen. And the perplexing situation is that their girl is always complaining that he doesn't tell her he loves her enough. He doesn't say that she's pretty enough. He doesn't text her or call her enough or fast enough back that she's always, always needs something. You know, like a lot of guys, I see some guys cracking smiles. It's all right. You can do it for real right? And girls are constantly, it's like if you meet one need, all of a sudden there's another one that pops up and you're just like, whoa, okay? Like just, just calm down. The list goes on and on, all right? I just gave you a couple of the quick examples, but guess what? That's because spiritual leadership requires sacrifice, all right? And the spiritual leader in the relationship, guys, is you, not her. So the responsibility to provide the example of sacrifice is you, and not with complaints. Like, you got to really lean on God for this to do it joyfully, because sometimes it can be hard, all right? But this means, like, sacrificing in a couple of different ways, all right? Sometimes it's practically, like, you're sacrificing your own comfort, like maybe you're out somewhere and she didn't bring a jacket and she's cold and you got a jacket, you give the jacket to her, now you're cold. But that's your sacrifice that you're showing, right, as the leader. Maybe the sacrifice is in your own convenience, like you go and pick her up and take her places and do the driving. But you might be like, yeah, but she has her own car and she's got plenty of cash for gas and she likes driving doesn't matter. It's the example of service and sacrifice that you're offering. Maybe the sacrifice, guys, is a lot harder. Maybe it's sacrificing your pride, like admitting you're wrong or saying you're sorry, asking for forgiveness. And here's where it gets really hard, guys. This is real hard. Like maybe in the fight, you're like 99% right. And she's like really, really wrong. But you still have a 1% going to her and admitting that. And not being like, well, <laughs> you were way wrong. Like, I want to hear your apology to me. Like, nope. Be the leader. Show what it looks like to apologize and own something. And you know what? She may in that moment all of a sudden be like, you know, oh, man, I'm sorry. I yelled. I shouldn't have done that. But even if she doesn't, she's going to think about that. God's going to do a work through your leadership example. She may come back to you later and go, you know, thanks for apologizing. I was pretty rude to you. I shouldn't have done that. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed at what good leadership does in others. All right? So sacrifice. Guys, why do you sacrifice? Here's why. Your woman is going to look to you 
for spiritual service and example. She needs to feel supported by you, and she needs to feel like you're supporting her in front of others as well. Your woman is going to look to you to set the pace spiritually in your relationship. Whether she says that or not, that's what she's going to do. She may not even realize that that's what she's doing, but she's going to look to you. You set the pace. You have the power to do that, guys. Do you realize that? Okay, I see some guys nodding your head. Good. You do. You have that power to do that. And that's what she's going to look for. So here's the question, guys, that you have to start asking yourself if you're not already, okay? And it's not a question that most people would just ask themselves. But if you're a guy and you're dating someone or you hope to date someone someday, you got to ask yourself, how am I leading her closer to Christ every time we interact and get together? What kind of an example am I providing to her with my lifestyle, with my decisions, with the way I talk, with the things I do? Am I, am I, what kind of example am I offering? Because, guys, when you get a girlfriend, and those of you that have girlfriends, you know this, like when she's close to you and she feels safe to you, she's going to start trusting you, and she's going to look to you to help with opinions on important things in her life. You know, she's going to want, like, wisdom and guidance from you. Like, what do you think about this? I'm thinking of doing this. I might be going to this college. What do you think? She values your opinion. She values your counsel and your wisdom and your input. And she's going to be looking to you for that. All right? So we just talked about how kind of emotionally demanding or, or even sometimes needy women can look, right, on the surface, I say that because it's not really needy. It just looks that way. And if you're a spiritually immature man, that's what you'll think and that's what you'll see. And guess what? You're going to get real annoyed with your girlfriend. But a spiritually immature man is not going to look at it like that. He's not going to be like, oh, here we go. He's going to be like, Lord, you're giving me an opportunity. Give me an opportunity to lead this woman that you've given me in my life, that you're allowing me to, to spend time with. And that is an awesome privilege to have. Now, some girls might be sitting here going, Ms. Anna, that's not me. I am not like that. I am a super cool, super chill girl. I don't ask a lot for my boyfriend. I don't bother him. I'm not clingy like that. But, ladies, I want to challenge you, okay? Because I know some of us have more mellow personalities than others. But this is not a personality thing. This is a God wiring thing, all right? And I want to show you in the scriptures where it is. We're only going to park on this scripture tonight, all right? I know a lot of times when I teach, I've got like 85 scriptures. I'm like, go here, go here, go here. We're focusing on this one because this is a big one. So turn in your Bibles because whether you're male or female, I want you to circle, star, highlight, whatever, because this is a scripture verse I need you to go back to in your quiet time and focus on. We're going to 1 Corinthians Chapter 11, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 7. It gives us the answer why women and girls are like this, all right? It says this, man is made in God's image and reflects God's glory, and woman reflects man's glory. And what that basically means is that God created Adam, right? In the book of Genesis, God created Adam in his image. And Adam instinctively knows that he comes from God. So he is wired to seek God first in everything, all right? Eve, on the other hand, she came from Adam. If you remember in Genesis, she comes from his rib. That's how God creates her. We also know that the word woman means of man, that's what man means, of man. So women's first instinct, okay, notice what I'm saying, first instinct is to look toward the male in her life, whether that's her dad or her older brother or her, you know, boyfriend or husband. It's to look to the male in their life to lead them spiritually. And this is how we come to understand that men are wired to initiate and women are wired to respond, all right? 
Now, I have to pause and talk to my girls in the room real quick, guys. Pardon me. Ladies, please understand something about this, all right? I don't want any confusion. I am not saying that you cannot have the spiritual gift of leadership because you can. It is a spiritual gift, and it, it's not gender-specific, all right? Men, if you have a lady in your life who has that gift, you are very blessed. But that does not mean that she's supposed to lead you in the relationship, okay? It means she's just got to be an extra blessing to you. But ladies, I also am not saying that this verse means that you're not supposed to go to God, that you're only supposed to go to the men in your life. That is not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is the verse shows us we are more prone to instinctively want to do that, okay? Because of how we are wired as responders. And that's because we're wired as the glory of man, okay? So hopefully this makes some sense, but that's why I wanted you to circle the verse so that you can really study this and go to God in your prayer time to understand it. Now, here is, um, I just want to be a little more clear on spiritual leadership, okay? We're going to dive more deeply into those, those characteristics that you saw, all right? I understand, guys, because I know some of you guys are like sitting here going, oh, and uh, being a spiritual leader sounds really hard. It does not sound like something I will enjoy. It does not sound like something I can do for myself, for any woman, for anyone. Hold up. Take a deep breath, guys. Yes, you can. You can do it. And let me tell you why. You will feel fear. You will. That's part of the design as a spiritual leader. The feeling of fear is what is going to drive you and compel you and motivate you to lean on God, to be your teacher, to actually lead you as you lead a girl in your life, okay? That's how it's supposed to be. It's a partnership between you and God. It's not like, hey, you're the spiritual leader, figure it out. Do it in your own strength. Uh Uh-uh, we see too many guys doing that, and it doesn't work okay? They're frustrated. The women in their life are frustrated. God does not get glory in that. You are to partner with God on it, and he is going to equip you to do it, because the thing is, God wants you to succeed, guys. He wants you to be able to successfully lead well, because you are going to glorify him in the process. So don't get discouraged when you hear oh my gosh, everything I'm about to share about spiritual leadership, because I know it can be a little overwhelming. Just keep in mind, you've got to have a rock-solid relationship with Jesus before you date a girl, okay? Because if you don't, you're going to be missing a huge part of how you're going to lead her. And a lot of guys date girls before they really have a relationship with Christ. And this is why they're not able to successfully lead well in the relationship. All right, so it's about preparation. If you're not dating, and even if you are, still prepare. We talked about the general gist of spiritual leadership. Let's dive into those components, all right? Let's talk about being an initiator. Why on earth would being an initiator be one of these traits for a spiritual leader? Because think about it. How many of you know a shy guy? They exist, right? And let's say you're not a shy guy by nature, but when you like a girl, like really like a girl, you might just find yourself pretty shy all of a sudden, out of nowhere. It happens. Well, that's something I want you boys to think about. Because if you feel like when you like a girl, you are just so afraid to talk to her, to do anything, to, do, to breathe, to whatever, you may not be spiritually mature enough and ready to actually date Because when a man is spiritually mature and becomes a spiritual leader, he has a sense of holy confidence to initiate. Now, that doesn't mean that he's not a little nervous, but it means that he has courage, that he has bravery, that he's going to go for what he knows God is calling him to go after. And if that's a certain girl, then he's going to do it. Because here's the thing. Guys. You are the ones to ask girls out. It's not old-fashioned. It's biblical. 
because it means you're initiating, okay? Now, I'm not saying that girls are not going to ask you out. There are a lot of girls that do that. But that's really what y'all are supposed to do, men, okay? It's part of being a leader. You're getting the ball rolling. You're the one to initiate and start, okay, to show that you have intention. And we're going to get to that later. But I want to tell you what a lot of guys are doing. And you guys probably know people who have done this. If you've done it, please don't feel bad, but just listen, all right? A lot of guys will like a girl, okay? They'll be like, hey, that girl in my math class, she's really hot. She's really cute. I like her. I want to ask her to be my girlfriend. I'm talking to your buddy, okay? And you're like, I don't know if she likes me, though. So I'm going to, like, talk to her friends and, like, find out, like, hey, is she dating anyone? Does she have a boyfriend? Like, do you think she, does she kind of like me? Like, I'm going to talk to her friends first. Or, or they're just going to, like, you know, wait around until they can kind of feel like the girl likes her them. Like, oh yeah, she's starting to look at me. I see her smiling at me. You know, she's kind of flirting with me. Now I can ask her out. Guys, if that's what you're doing, you're not being a leader. You're following her lead and her friend's lead. You're being a follower. You're not being a leader. A leader doesn't dance around until something's safe. They go for something whether it's safe or not, if the Lord has kind of given them peace and confirmation that that's the right thing and the right one, they go for it. They don't need to know if she likes them or not. Maybe she doesn't. Maybe she'll turn you down and reject you. But being a man is where you don't crumble at being rejected because you have a relationship with Jesus that tells you you're a good guy. And you have a good plan that he's working out for you. So if a girl that you like says, no, no thanks, it's not going to kill you. You might be a little disappointed, but it won't kill you. If you're so concerned that her rejection is going to destroy you, then you don't have a strong enough foundation in Christ to be asking girls out. I really want you guys to think about that because it's okay if you're not ready. It's okay. It's like, all right, well, I'm just not there yet. So I'm not going to be asking any girls out. It's okay if I like some girls, but, you know, I'm going to prepare. All right? But men initiate. Men go for it. They do what God's calling them to do. Now, that dovetails real nicely into the next quality of what it means to be a spiritual leader. So we're going to talk about being a calculated risk taker. Notice, guys, I use the word calculated in this phrase. Because that means that risk-taking involves a level of wisdom that you have weighed with the Lord before you make a decision here. It does not mean that you're taking wild, crazy, reckless chances out of nowhere because you're called to be a risk-taker, but not a fool. All right? So calculated risk-taker. And, and what does that mean, to take a calculated risk? It means that if you're a spiritually mature guy, you understand something that a lot of other guys don't. You understand that it's your job to protect girls from being vulnerable. I'm not just talking protect them in the sense of physically. Like, you know, I mean, we always hear that men are the protectors, and that's what we think. Like, oh, they'll take a bullet for their girlfriend and their wife. Yes, you are a physical protector. But you are a protector of their heart. You are a protector of them feeling emotionally vulnerable. So what does that mean? That means you lead by providing a safe place and a safe space for this girl that you like to respond to you, okay? You're the one to lay your heart on the line first. You're the one that gets the ball rolling even if you have no idea how she's going to respond, That risk is for you guys to take, all right? So that means you ask her out. That means you tell her you love her first when you feel that way. That means you ask her to marry you. None of these women on TV that are bringing out rings, and I'm looking at these women like, are you serious? You're just impatient, you know? Um, Guys, that's for you. That's for you, and you are capable of it. You are capable of these things. Now, I know it's a big responsibility to be a spiritual leader. 
these are some heavy things that we're talking about. But God designed the role for you guys. He did. So he's going to equip you. If he calls you to ask a girl out, if he's moving you in that direction and you're obedient to go for it, he's not just going to be like, peace, let me watch the train wreck. No, he's going to be with you in it. And he's going to help you if you're seeking him regularly about it. So let's move on to the next quality of a spiritual leader. That's being intentional, all right? Being intentional, guys, this is all it means. It means that you are upfront about your feelings and your intentions with a girl. Ladies, can we say amen? Amen. How many girls, just real quick show of hands, because guys, I don't know if you realize this. How many girls have ever dated a guy or whatever you want to call it, because I know we talked about all the different versions last week, but you were like confused if he really liked you. You're like, I don't know what we are. I don't know if there's a future. I don't know if he really likes me. I see so many girls like, men, men, all y'all in the room, do you want to know how to get any girl pretty much almost? I'm serious. If you are the guy that is always upfront about your feelings and your intentions, girls are going to be like, He's the unicorn of men. Where did he come from? Because we almost think it doesn't exist. But if you do that, I promise you, you will stand out in a great, great way. But not only for you, don't get all big and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get every girl. For God. Because when other guys are going to be like, why are you like, you know, why are you like that? Or when other girls are like, you've never been like a guy I've ever dated. You can be like, I've got Jesus Christ guiding me. Like, like, literally, this is, this is me being who God called me to be, a Christian spiritual leader. And that's what I'm trying to be with his help. I promise you, being intentional, being upfront, being clear, being direct, guys, that matters. That's part of leadership. If somebody's not clear and direct, how can he, they lead? Leading requires amazing communication, like being up front so the people that you're leading understand the program, what's going on, where y'all are at, okay? A lot of men think, oh, I don't have the define the relationship conversation until we've been like hanging out, dating, whatever you want to call it, for several months. No, you do that pretty up front. You do that from the get-go because if she's not on the same page, you need to know, and that's going to... St- st- basically help everyone in the situation. So clear, direct, open. Here's the other thing, guys. A spiritual leader that's intentional will not take action, will not make a move until they are 100% sure how they feel, all right? And you're probably going, how am I supposed to know how I feel about a girl? I haven't really gone out with her. Okay, we're going to talk more about this later. But when you're getting to know girls through school, church, community, observe, pay attention. Don't be so self-absorbed with your guys and your bros that it's like, I got to go out to dinner with her to know her. Watch who she is. See how she interacts with her friends, with other people, with the teacher. Is she respectful? Is she kind? Look at her character. When you get to know her through community, then you'll know if she's a woman that has all those traits that you want to be involved with, right? And so when you do, you're going to pray and ask the Lord, show me how I'm really feeling. Is this just a crush that next week I'm going to like the next girl? Or is this something really special and different? And if you know that you know that you know, that's when you make the decision to make a move in terms of asking her out or being her boyfriend. Don't do it prematurely. If you're kind of like, oh my gosh, she's really hot. I want to go out with her. She's a cheerleader. She's this, she's that. She's the popular girl. I think she likes me. And you go out with her. And then one week later, you're like, she is so rude. She is so rude. Well, how could you, if she's a rude person, she's not just going to be rude to you. She's going to be rude to a lot of people and you just weren't paying attention. All right? So this is really important, guys. You don't want to be so quick to just ask a girl out. You got to be intentional. Now, lastly, and probably most importantly about being intentional, guys, this is really important, all right? You are the lead in setting 
and enforcing mutual boundaries in your relationship that is going to preserve and protect the spiritual integrity of yourself and of the girl. None of this, you go out with a girl and she's like, I don't want to have sex until marriage. Okay, you know, I'll do that because I love you. No, guys, you are the ones that say, look, I'm really attracted to you. I sometimes have a hard time with that. But we need to have a talk about like how we're going to work through that. Maybe I don't need to be over at your house past, you know, a certain time, and I certainly don't need to be in your bedroom alone with you. You have those conversations. And then if she's, like, innocently like, oh, hey, come on over. I want to show you something in my room. You are the one that says, can you bring it out here? Guys, that is for you to do, not for us. We try to do it. Some girls, not all. Some girls try to do it, but if their guy is not really on board, eventually your leadership wins. Your leadership wins. And then guess what? Your spiritual integrity and her spiritual integrity, wholeness, soundness, pureness is shot. And guess who God holds most accountable in that relationship? He holds both people accountable, but he's going to be looking at you men because your job is to lead. So you got a double whammy. Spiritual leaders do these things. They protect the integrity of others with boundaries. And if you're like, I don't know what to do with a boundary. Remember what we talked about last time? Mentors, 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 mentors. If you don't want to talk about it with your parents, then you talk about it with an older, wise, spiritual mentor. What kind of boundaries should I have? I don't even know. They will tell you. They will help you. Okay? Now, we have spiritual leadership defined. We're going to move into the next part. What do you do with it? You guys are probably like, Miss Anna, you just said a lot. What do you mean, what do I do with it? How do we put this into action? Let's talk about it. We're going to wrap up tonight's message with some specifics on how you discern you should be dating a particular girl. And ladies, this can apply to you too, if you should be saying yes and going out with a particular guy or something else. So let's, let's move on. And we are now arriving at the next slide, Miss Sydney. Here. Who knows what this is? Say it really loud. Friend zone. She's drawn a circle around him like you stay here. And he's got a heart like, but I love you. And she's got like, nope, but I don't. The friend zone. We're arriving here. Let's face it, guys. We never choose the friend zone. Nobody, nobody has ever enjoyed it. No one wants to be there. Why? Because it feels like purgatory. It feels like the twilight zone. Like you're just over and over and over reliving your worst nightmare. And here's the weird thing about it. For something that nobody likes, it really seems to creep up on people unexpectedly pretty often. And that is why we're going to explore how this happens. How do you get friend zoned? Or on the flip side, how do you, as the person that puts someone in the friend zone, how do you get in the position that now you have to do that? Let's talk about it. To do that, I have to define friendship levels with you. So we're going to, for purposes of tonight's discussion, we're going to go by a study that I came across, and it's done by a doctor named Dr. Pamela Reeve. She's a psychologist. She has specialized in studying romantic relationships between men and women and done a lot of research over the course of her career. So she identifies three key levels of a friendship. The first one is called the acquaintance. This is like the random person that you barely know. You run into them periodically, and you mostly know them through mutual friends, all right? The second is called a companion. The companion is a friend, but this is a friend that you spend less than two hours a week with, and that means like in person or on the phone or, you know, through social media. This is not someone that you get super, super close to. Even if you'd want to, you wouldn't necessarily. You just, they're more of a companion. Now, the best friend... That's your person. That's a person that you feel like you can be yourself with. They know you inside and out. They accept you and your flaws. Like you can tell them your deep, dark secrets. That is who that person is. You have a deep, intimate closeness with them, right? Now, before we talk about how to avoid the friend zone, I just have a quick question for you guys. All right, random sampling. 
Tell me, just raise your hand if you've ever had a friend of the opposite sex. Okay, pretty common, a lot of people. How many of you that raised your hands have now or ever had a best friend of the opposite sex? All right, keep your hands up. Miss Raya, can you get a microphone? Now, if any of you want to tell me why that person is your best friend, like what is it about the relationship that makes them your best friend? Um, so keep, who would like to? Who would like to share? I see Jasmine. Jasmine's willing to share. Jasmine, will you stand and then let Raya give you the mic so we can pick it up on the recording? Otherwise, on YouTube, it just sounds like silence, radio silence. What's good, guys? <laughs> All right, what's the question? So why do you consider your best friend who's the opposite sex, why are they your best friend? What is it about them? Uh, he's funny. Also, I've known him since third grade, so. All right, so longevity, you know, a long time, great sense of humor. Okay, anyone else want to share why they have a best friend? Okay, Ryan in the back. Ryan, why don't you stand up, and we'll give you the mic so we can hear you on the recording. Um. I can just be myself around them. Like, I don't have to put on a, a mask. Like, you just be yourself. Like, I'm, you don't have to try to impress them or anything. Like, you can just be yourself around them. And also time, like Jazzy said. Okay. Just be, having a lot of time with them. Great. All right. So you feel authentic around them, and there's no hiding, no secrets, and you're able to spend quality time. Matthew, why don't we get Matthew real quick? Matthew, stand up, please. Thank you. You trust them more than most people in your life. That is excellent. Trust. Deep trust. Deep, deep trust. Anyone else? Okay. These were great. Thank you, Riot. These were great reasons why we would feel that this individual could be our best friend. Now, I want you guys to, let's, let's talk about this best friend concept. I'm going somewhere with this. Follow me. Look at the screen, all right? Next, you're going to see this picture here, this puzzle piece, is a symbol of a best friend because this is the person you fit with. You guys just work together. You gel. Some people would be like, we complete each other. All right, like, that's what a best friend feels like. They've got your back. They love you. They support you. They encourage you. They know you inside and out. And I want to look a little further. Um, Miss Sydney, if we can go to the next slide. I, I know I got it out of order in our script, but... Let's read what Dr. Reeve says best friends are. Her criteria and her studies say you have what Ryan said, extensive time talking to each other. You have one-on-one -on -one hanging out, deep knowledge of each other's hopes and dreams. Like you know each other more than anyone else. Like what Matthew said, you trust each other. Sharing daily lives and routines, kind of like what Jazzy said. She's known this person all her life practically. But let's, you know, to me, this, I don't know, this is sounding a little similar to marriage, but I'm not really sure. So let's see what Dr. Reeves said marriage criteria is. Check that one out. Huh, that is not an accidental duplicate, folks. That is on purpose. That is on purpose. They are one and the same. Best friend, marriage partner. Do you hear Mr. Paul all the time calls Brittany his best friend? I love that, guys. I love that. Okay? And, and I always get scratched my head when people are like, I'm so lucky to marry my best friend. If you're married to the person, they should be your best friend. That is what they, thank you. That is what they are. It's not lucky to marry your best friend. It's part of God's plan. That's what it is. But this is why it's a problem if you're not married and your best friend is of the opposite sex. This is why, because no matter how clearly you and your best friend have said to themselves, to each other, to anyone else, we are just friends. They are like my sibling. No matter how much you say it, your actions, and we know actions speak louder than words, your actions are saying, I enjoy being with you, interacting with you, spending time with you in a way that suggests romantic attraction or marriage one day. So somebody at some point is going to get confused. And if you're like, I've known my opposite sex best friend for 20 years, wait, you're not 20, 17 years. 
it's probably your best friend who's friend zoned. And I can tell you from experience as a grown woman, I can't tell you how many best friend guy friends I had for years that now are like, oh, I was in love with you. You just had, no I'm like, what? You were my brother. Trust me, trust me. God wires us a certain way, okay? Don't be so naive, naive, okay? I promise you, if your best friend isn't saying it now, give it five or 10 years. If they're still in your life and they're not married to you, they're gonna have a moment where they say, yeah, I kind of developed feelings for you. Because this is how we're wired, guys. And I say this not so you'll have a go home and you know, have a best friend breakup, but just so you're mindful. Because friend zoning someone is terrible, guys. It is not a comfortable place to be. Now, let's talk about, let me move on here in my notes because I know I'm running out of time. This is what happens when I go off the grid. Everyone says, why do you always have notes, Miss Anna? Because I'll talk forever and I won't stop. All right, some of you guys, here's the next thing, because I see a lot of you and you have skeptical faces. Like I've, t I've touched a sore spot. I have been best friends with this person forever. We have been strictly platonic. What are you talking about, Miss Anna? How about this? Think about this. I'm gonna ask the guys the question first. Guys, have you ever had a girl turn you down when you asked her out? Or maybe she became your girlfriend and then she got jealous of your girl friends, your female friends. And yeah, thank you for your honesty, sir. Right, thank you for your honesty, sir. I bet there's a lot more guys that are like, yep. How about this one, ladies? Ladies, your turn. Have you ever been kind of hesitant to go out with a particular guy that you like because he is super popular with the girls and he has a groupy fan base of them as his best friends and some of them are like his sisters? And it's even worse, guys, when these people are attractive, all right? So even when they're not attractive, you're still like, um, they, I feel like they come first and I'm second. But if they're attractive, you're like, oh my gosh, how do you not like him or how do you not like her? Would you really want to date someone who has long-term, pre-existing, significant, and ongoing emotional bonds with someone of the opposite sex? How could you compete with that? You can't. And the point is, you shouldn't. I had to make this decision for myself. I'm preparing for my future husband. I let go of all my male friends. I do not do one-on-one -on -one male friendships. And some of these guys had a very hard time understanding. And I had to say, when I meet my future husband, I don't want him to feel the slightest bit that he has to compete with anyone or the slightest bit insecure or the slightest bit anything. I want him to know he is the only guy in my life. I don't need, I've got girlfriends and they are my friends and I've got male brothers in Christ in my church, but I do not need close, personal, best friends because if that's gonna happen, it's the man I'm gonna date. It's the man I'm gonna eventually marry. That is important because when we get confused and we mess this up, we hurt people unintentionally. We friend zone them or they do it to us and it is complicated. That's not what God wants because he doesn't want to complicate our life. He wants to help give us clarity to be successful in our lives. Don't be gluttons for punishment. That's all I'm saying. Guys, you as the spiritual leaders have a responsibility to pursue clarity and to guide your conversations with girls into clarity. You're either going to be her boyfriend or you're going to be her companion. And if she doesn't know what a companion looks like or means, you got to let her know, like, yo, I'll hang out with you in groups. We can hang out with people at church or school or whatever. I'm not going to be calling you. I'm not going to be texting you one-on-one. -on -one. If you text me, I'm probably not going to get back to you, like, nothing personal, but I'm just not doing that, okay? So she knows. And if she keeps, like, violating your, your boundary guy, because you some of you guys know, some of these girls they're out for you. They want you. They like you. And they're going to be blowing up your phone all the time. Even with like, hey, what was our homework assignment? You know, whatever. Just repeat. And if you're repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating and she's still disrespecting you, take action 
don't respond and then tell her later politely, this is why I'm not responding to you. I told you already. Okay, guys, it's, it's you got to be clear. Because if you're not clear, you get yourself in these situations that you don't need to be in. Now, let me see here. Where are we at? All right. What do you do when you're in that situation? All right, there's a slide, I think, coming up. All right, here's what you do. First of all, guys, just don't let her become your buddy. She's not your buddy, okay? She's not. <laughs> she's either your girlfriend or she's not. She's either the companion or the girlfriend, no in between. And you have to let her go sometimes, guys. If, like, you don't want to be her boyfriend, but you kind of know she likes you a little more than that, then you have to let her go and move on. It's hard. You can't just be like, well, just stay in my life as your friend because you know what she's going to say? Okay, I'll be your friend. But she's going to be sitting there waiting for the day that you change your mind. She's going to get jealous with every girl you go out with. You can't. All right? Tell her you're reserving the best friend spot for your girlfriend one day. Girls, just don't sit there and be like, well, he hasn't asked me out because he's too shy. He hasn't asked you out because he's either not a spiritual leader that's ready to ask you out or... He doesn't like you like that, <laughs> okay? It's that easy, ladies. If he's not pursuing and initiating, he probably doesn't see you that way, or he's not ready. He's not a spiritual leader. Why do you want to date a guy that's not a spiritual leader? It's not going to go that well. Understand that, all right? So you don't just wait around. You don't, girls, you don't overanalyze. You don't talk to your girlfriend 80 million times a day. So he said this, and I think he really meant this. And oh my gosh, did you see how he looked at me in math class? Like he lingered. He totally lingered. Did you see him linger? Don't, ladies, don't. If he likes you, he's going to ask you out. And if he doesn't, he's not ready. Remember that, okay? Now, when you spend time alone with the opposite sex, either in person, on the phone, social media, your focus is going to be just on you two. It's going to be on, like, what they like, what they're doing, how they feel about something, what they think about you. But if you're spending time with the opposite sex in Christian community, you now have a layer of added accountability, and your focus isn't just on each other. It's on others. It's also on the reason why you're gathered, Jesus, which is important. So do you see why when scripture tells us in 1 Timothy 5, 1 and 2, it tells us what we're supposed to think of um, Christian community. We see each other as brothers and sisters in the faith. Now, does that mean that you'll never like meet someone to date in church? No, yes, you can. You can develop that. If it's mutual and you're both feeling it, guys, lead. Ask her out. Be clear that you're taking her on a date, not just hanging out as a friend. Like, be, be clear. And girls, be clear in agreement. If you don't like him like that, don't just be like, um, maybe, yeah, because you don't want to hurt his feelings. He will handle honesty well. Guys, can I ask you a question? Gentlemen, if a girl doesn't like you and you really like her and you ask her out and she is honest with you and says, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't see you like that. I don't want to go out with you. It might hurt you. But will you respect that more than her being like, yeah, maybe. Maybe, okay, maybe next week, and gives your number, and then, like, she doesn't answer you. She ghosts you. Which would you respect? Right? The first one. Thank you, guys. You, you're, you're guys. You, you might not like being rejected. Nobody does. But you'd rather have an honest answer than a girl that leads you on because she's afraid of hurting your feelings or because maybe she'll change her mind next week. No, ladies, no wishy-washy answers. Clear, direct. If you're not sure how you feel about him, probably shouldn't go out with him. Because nine times out of ten, that's your gut. That's the Holy Spirit speaking. If God's in it, you're going to have clarity. You're going to know. And also, there's no, like, ladies like, okay, I'll go out with you. I'm not really sure if I like you. Let's just, we're, like, this isn't really a thing. We're not going to call it a date. We'll just see how it goes. You're giving that guy false hope, girls. Don't do that to him. Love him enough as a brother in the faith to respect him. If you are not on fire for him the way he's on fire for you, then no. Politely say no. That's all there is to it. So he's freed up to go pursue someone else eventually, to just move on. 
All right, I'm wrapping this up for real this time. These are protective measures. If you use them, you don't only protect yourself, you protect other people. And God honors that. God digs that. He blesses that. So it's something to really consider. We're going to look um, in two weeks in part three, we're going to get to like pursuing holiness in a relationship and what that means and what that looks like. So tonight I'm going to pray us out. And then Ms. Raya, no, no, Ms. Rihanna is going to come up and share quick highlights for you guys. All right, so let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you for being a God that loves us enough to have everything for us to understand about what it is you want of us, God. You are clear. You are the ultimate leader, God, because you are clear. Your word does not mince words. You are plain in what you say, God. And and, and if we're not understanding your word, that's not because you're not being clear. That's because we still need to grow and figure some things out for ourselves. God, we thank you that you are helping us to understand how to be set up for success in relationships. It's not easy, but nothing worthwhile is easy. Things that are easy, the get-rich-quick schemes, all that, those are not in the long run what really prosper us. So help us, God, to do what we need to do. Help all the men in this room to rise up and stand out as holy, as men of God, unapologetically, and let every peer of theirs, every friend of theirs, every girl that they know just be blown away with what it looks like to really lead. I I pray, God, that you will just guide these guys. And if part of their leadership is, I'm not ready to date, then let them make that choice and be intentional with it. I thank you, God, for the discussions we're about to have. Please guide them. Help us to focus on, on what you have for us and to be productive in it. Protect our time. We love you, God. We praise you. Help us glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, give a hand for Anna. I can't clap with a mic in my hand. Okay, I need everyone to say, next week. Guess what next week is? Thanksgiving, Cranksgiving. Okay, um, I want to have two people raise their hands and tell me something you look forward to doing during the week of Thanksgiving. All right, go ahead. Eating, okay. Casseroles, okay, I only eat casseroles once a year. All right, let's take one more, Elijah in the back. Going to North Carolina, okay. You know why you guys can enjoy all these things? Guess why? Guess what? Because we're not gonna be here. We don't have students, that's the announcement. We are not gonna be here, but when you come back, We will be gearing up for Christmas. Can everyone say Christmas? Guess what's happening on Christmas? We're having a Waterstone Young Christmas party, and it is going to be off campus. It is going to be super fun, but you can't come unless you're signed up. So the links are up online at mywaterstone.church. We've also posted it on the Facebook page. So if you want to go, find it, tell your mom, tell your brother, tell your friend, and be like, let's all go, guys. Let's be best friends. Okay? Does everyone got that? Can you say, got it? All right. Say announcement number two. All right. That was a mouthful. Um, A few weeks ago, we talked about um, the announcement about Elias and his diagnosis of cancer and how that was really difficult for us to hear about that. So we, if you didn't know already, we are sponsoring their family for a Christmas type of surprise. And all their donations of gifts and things that they have are in the student lounge on the wall. There's a few gifts left that still need to be purchased. And we do ask two things of you. One, that you ask your parents first before you grab a tag and say, Mom and Dad, spend this money, please. So ask them first and get permission. And two, if you do get permission and you want to take that gift, you have to very clearly write it on the board out there which gift you took and the code that's on it. So don't take a gift tag if you're not meaning to fulfill the gift because that gift is not going to be given to that family for the year. And that's not going to be the greatest. But if you're not able to give a gift and you still want to do something, we're all writing Christmas cards or turning in little fun things that we can all bring. Uh, Student leaders can bring to the um, Alonzo's, Elias Alonzo. What's her last name? 
Welch's house. So if you want to take like fun photos or disposable camera or you have little things you want to give him or cards or encouragement, um, you guys can turn those into us and we will be able to give them to them. So that is our second announcement. Our third announcement and our last announcement is um, we are going to be continuing with the finale of this series um, next, next week. So not Thanksgiving week. That's a blip in time. But the next one, when we come back, will be the finale. And I wanted to speak to a lot of people here who maybe heard this message, and they were like, well, why should I even care? I really don't want to care about or be a spiritual leader. I don't have that desire in me. Or maybe you're a girl, and you really don't care to find someone who's a spiritual leader. If you have any sort of questions, you want to know why you should care, because there's a reason all of us student leaders are here. Um, Another leader said it a few weeks ago that none of us are paid to be here. We come here voluntarily, which means we believe in something so wholeheartedly that we put our time into this. So if you want to know why we care so much, even as we've gotten older, come meet with with any of us leaders to get that information. We would be happy to share with you why it's important and why it can positively affect your life. So that's my last one. But before we break out into groups, I have some fun things to do.